Hi, so I'm here with Jeff Hoffman, co-founder of Priceline, UBID, and Color Jar. But not only that, he also surprises us as being a film producer. <laughs> and I hear that you've won a Grammy with a jazz blues album. You'll like it even better. It was Latin jazz themed. Oh, Latin! <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh, awesome. And I heard that you've gotten to work with the likes of Elton John. Yes, a lot of uh, some of my musical heroes. Uh, while we were working in the music business, we got a chance to work with. In fact, the follow-up to the jazz album uh, is being recorded in Cuba. Uh, so we're going to have a Latin influence. It'll be, we think, the first time ever there'll be a jointly produced jazz album with Cuban and American artists because you couldn't do it before. That sounds fantabulous. And when yeah. is that coming out? Uh, probably the spring. Oh, perfect. So spring 2017, we got a real treat for you. <laughs> um, so I'm really interested in the film industry as well. So I'd love to ask you some questions about sure. that aspect. What kind of films do you lean towards investing in? So we started, not investing, but actually producing ourselves. I have a production company. We started making horror films. Okay. We made horror films, though, not because I love bloody horror films, <laughs> but because under it all, I'm a businessman. Okay. And, I, you know, it didn't make sense to just waste money making films that no one would ever see. Horror films are very commercially viable. Mm -hmm. um, they don't cost a lot comparatively because they don't have Tom Cruise in them for $20 million. That makes sense. Uh, because <laughs> you can't have a big star because everyone knows they won't die. Mm -hmm. So horror films are usually much lower budget and it's what people watch, it's what people rent and watch on Netflix. So at the beginning we did scary movies. In fact, my business partner was, uh, uh, in the movies is a guy named Eli Roth. And Eli uh, worked mm -hmm. with the South American director, Nicholas Lopez, mm -hmm. uh, who's down in uh, Chile. Okay. Um, and sh shot a series of films. I didn't do these, but they want. I just didn't have time. But they wanted to help the uh, uh, film industry continue to grow in South America. So they went down there and they shot uh, Aftershock was one of them, Green Inferno, a series of movies in South America. The other reason I didn't go was because they shot in the Amazon, where there were spiders like the size that, of your head. That is very I'm true. I'm not sure I need to go true. stand in the Amazon <laughs> for three months. <laughs> well, Amazon is beautiful, but yeah, lots of bug spray. So one night, right, you get to visit. It's like Epcot yeah. Center. <laughs> right, you get to go to every country. So I went the, you know, I went with the whole group from Ecuador, and then I went with the whole Guatemalan group. But they're kids; they're 16 yeah. year olds, and to talk to them about their lives and their futures was so uplifting. It, it really is. My job was to get on stage and tell them you can do that and you should. Don't follow. Do it. Do that, it. Sadly, sometimes it's don't follow your parents' advice. Oh. You need to keep being a role model, uh, especially <laughs> especially uh, for Latina girls. I have okay. a friend who's an actress, uh, Jamie Lynn Sigler. She used to be on The Sopranos. Mm. Um, and, you know, she spends a lot of time, she was just a young Latina girl that wanted to make something, had mm -hmm. big dreams, and she's been very successful in television and film and stuff, but she takes the time to go out and make, she realizes she's an inspiration, yes. so you are the same thing, make sure Aww, you, make sure you, you recognize that, <laughs> because thank we you. want young girl, some young girl to say, wait, she, what, I, I, she looks like me, she talks like me, I could yes. be her. If you could pick a genre that what if it didn't make so much money what is your favorite genre so now my favorite genre is actually comedy but I'll tell you we just I made a comedy. commitment we uh, you know part of I've been on like a four-year world tour of mentoring and trying to teach people how to help themselves and grow entrepreneurship mm -hmm. entrepreneurship meaning just teach people instead of that don't have a job to make a job basically so as a matter of fact we held our global entrepreneurship Congress intentionally in Medellin we held it in Colombia this year so we could be down in South America as well. you got to go to ne Ecuador next. <laughs> you know, I've been, uh, uh, but yeah. not for business, uh, a little eco-hiking. Um, we're doing a big event, actually, that I'm doing with Richard Branson in Mexico uh, that's coming up. So we're sort of supporting any place that people are trying to help themselves. So that being said, we're focused now on movies. The next set of movies we want to do will be uh, a positive message stories, uplifting where you read about people that, that made the world better around them. Mm -hmm. A young girl in Peru that I met like in the slums of Peru who wound up being a few, a couple months ago on stage with President Obama and Mark Zuckerberg at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit because what she did for young girls living in Peru. So we want to make movies yes. based on people that are changing the world around them. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I think people love uh, a good feel movie, you know, something to uplift them and bring them up. You know, a good scary movie is entertaining, <laughs> but an uplifting movie really changes you when you walk out of the theater. It, it, so that's that, awesome. That's our hope. We, mm -hmm. we, you know, there'll be this next generation of filmmaking that's called impact filmmaking. And we want to be part of, you know, secretly, I wouldn't say this out loud, but we want to lead that charge. And impact filmmaking is a movie that when it's done, you get up and say, we need to do something. Mm -hmm. We need to go help that girl in Peru, or we need to start something here. Let's get some people together. We want a film to drive you to actually do something better in the world because you were 
expired, excited and expired. How did this idea actually come about, Priceline? So the idea, the original <coughs> um, intellectual property, the original concept of a reverse auction, which is make an offer for something no one else bought, mm -hmm. uh, was created by a, guy named, by a guy named Jay Walker in uh, Connecticut. Jay had a think tank company uh, called Walker Digital. So originally we were all there mm. at Jay's company, looking at industries, looking at ideas, and saying, how do we, re how do we disrupt? Mm -hmm. How do we take ideas that were never in an industry before? So for example, you know, uh, until Priceline, a hotel set a price, it's $139 for the night. If you want to pay it, pay it. If you don't, you don't get a room. Exactly. So Priceline was the first company to say, hey, we know there's 10 empty rooms and you're getting zero for them, so I'll give you 50 bucks, mm -hmm. right? We were the first ones to do reverse auction for unsold inventory in the business. But that's how it came about. It was a group of people at a think tank saying, what are ideas we can apply in ways they've never been applied before? And that's Priceline came out of that organization. I mean, what an amazing, innovative idea, because I use it, I know all my friends use it, as, far, as long as you bit too, they use a lot. Yeah, thank you, you know, yeah, that, so. that was a similar concept when we did UBID, which was to say that, you know, here's the concept. When you, you know when is the best time to buy a car? When the new models come out. So right now the 2016 models are on the car lot, mm -hmm. but in October the 2017s come out. Mm -hmm. When the 2017s arrive, they only have limited parking spaces at a car dealer. So they need to get rid of the 2016s, but here's the thing, it's a brand new car, no one's ever driven it. Exactly. It's just now they need the space. Mm -hmm. So the, the day, the week that the 2017s come is when you should buy a brand new car, but you should buy a 2016. <laughs> exactly. That's what the UBID concept That's was. That's a little, a little hint <laughs> for you guys out there. Now you know when you go car go shopping. Go in October, right. Thank you, Jeff Hoffman. Literally, wait outside when you see the big truck come, get in front of it and say, yeah, where are you going to park these? Like, I'll take it. It's no problem. <laughs> so uh, that, that was the concept yeah. we, we saw. And again, same thing, right? If you see an idea in a different industry, and we mm -hmm. said, well, that probably works in a lot of places where people have something on the shelf, and the new ones come, and they need to clear the shelf. So UBID was a shelf clearing idea that we had from seeing a truck perfect. load of cars come to a car dealer. Exactly, perfect. And I'm really going to put into practice what you said in your speech today of taking 10 minutes out of your day to learn something new. Nothing that's in your industry, just learn something completely new. And I think that helps your brain just think differently and outside the box because most ideas have to be outside the box to be yes. successful ideas. And, and you so know, that's genius. That's it's really, it's not, it's not even think, think outside the box. It's saying, wait a minute, why is there even a box there? Who put that? There, right? <laughs> Way yeah. before you get inside Crush the box. The box. <laughs> and right, you should be saying there shouldn't even be a box there. Yes. Uh, so yeah, that, that the box uh, doesn't exist. <laughs> no, I love it, Jeff. Thank you so much. Your speech is amazing, and I have some live broadcast. Hopefully, y'all catch it. And thank you so much. Thank Jeff. you so I much for having me. I appreciate thank it. You. Thanks. I'll we'll see you again somewhere on the big screen. Yes, please <laughs> hire me. All right. Kitchen floor, it seems like you.